What do you need from Jesus today? He is present, and he is present in here for you. I'm Pastor Dean. Thanks for joining me here at the Lakes for Good News Reflections. It is August 7th, Friday. It's a beautiful day in Wapaka. For chapter day, we are reading Mark chapter 7. And uh, I just want to say the story we're going to read out of Mark 7, I, I love. It's one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture. And so I'm just going to invite you to read with me. We're going to uh, take a, a verse at a time and just reflect on it. So starting at verse 24, Mark chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. So Jesus and his disciples have traveled again into enemy territory. Uh, but this time, unlike Mark chapter 5, where they traveled to the other side of the lake to do battle with the demon, this time they go to Tyre, a non-Jewish community, uh, in order to have some vacation, to have a, a time at rest, uh, to uh, take a break and relax. And they enter into a house of another Jewish person. They wouldn't have entered into a non-Jewish household. They enter into a Jewish friend's house, and there they're resting. And let's, uh, verse 25 now. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit came and fell at Jesus' feet. The woman was a Greek, born in, a Syrian, born in Syria, Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. Well, have you ever been that desperate that you would beg someone? I can tell you if you're a parent, uh, you understand what that might look like or feel like. This Greek woman, a Gentile, comes into a Jewish household, which would make it unclean, and in a place that she knows she would not be welcome nor invited, asking for help. She begs Jesus for the sake of her daughter. Verse 27. Jesus is speaking. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, simply I want to say Jesus is uh, stating a, a plain fact to the woman. And he uses this analogy. And he says uh, that... Uh, I've, I've come to the children, the, the children should eat first. Or what he's saying is, I've come first to the house of ancient Israel. And then, you know, uh, then the Gentiles, they, well, they can have the crumbs. Jesus had a plan and a strategy. It was to uh, come to the house of Israel to raise up disciples who would then go out and to the four corners of the world. He had a strategy, and this was not a part of his plan. So he uses this analogy to talk to her, and the woman fully understands him. By the way, he is not insulting her with these words he uses. The calling of Gentiles dogs was a common insult used by many Jews of the time of Jesus. But the Greek word used here is a reference to pet dogs. And when Jews uh, insulted Gentiles using the word dog, they used a different word, a word that was used for wild or feral dogs. Jesus is simply here stating the fact that he has a plan and this doesn't fit it. Verse 28, yes, Lord, she replied. See, she agrees with him. Yes, Lord, good strategy. But even the dogs uh, under the table, eat the children's crumbs. I love this, Mom. 
Here she uh, persists and reminds Jesus that in real life, in real everyday life, the dogs are given crumbs under the table by the children. You may have a plan, Jesus. You may have a strategy, but everyday life is breaking in. Verse 29, then Jesus told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home, found her daughter lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Uh, Jesus was delighted, just delighted by the faith of this woman. He granted her request because of her humility and her persistence. Her faith and understanding was in contrast to the many times his own disciples misunderstood him. Her request had been made in pure faith that Jesus could actually perform this miracle. She understood the Messiah's lordship and that as a Gentile, she had no right to request mercy from Jesus. She was willing to accept his conditions. And on that basis, Jesus healed the woman's daughter. With his words, the demon left the little girl. This miracle showed that Jesus' power over demons is so great that he doesn't need to be present physically or even to speak any word to the demon directly in order to free someone. His power transcends any distance, any social divide, any ethnic or cultural differences, and even our best intentioned plans. So today, you may have not thought about it before, but what do you need to ask Jesus to heal in your life or to heal from someone whom you are burdened for? He is present. He is here for you. Have faith and ask. Thank you.